So we're now looking at topic 10.2. We're looking at lean production. So lean production is basically, I, mean, I want you to understand this, it's long, a very long-term strategy, and it considers the, the product and the process. Um, and really what we're focusing on is trying to reduce waste. Right, so it's, it focuses on continual feedback and incremental improvement, but the overall goal of lean production is to reduce waste as much as possible. And when you, when you reduce waste, you're also saving money. Okay, so it's it's a it's also a way to increase profits. Okay, so here's um, just a quick overview of, of things that Toyota does to have uh, lean um, lean product. Uh, lean production okay and then this video is also quite good uh, he goes into depth about uh, um, uh, lean production okay so please have a look at both of those videos okay now um, lean productions um, achieved through a couple uh, several ways so one of the ways is uh, just-in-time supplies right so that's this idea and we talked about it in the last um, uh, topic 10.1 we talked about the idea of of making sure that you don't have too much inventory not too much stock not too much completed goods all that stuff so it goes into that whole idea of just in time right so we're keeping a minimal stock of all uh, link processes we're producing the right amount at the right moment okay and this is a lot about customer pull um, and we're delivering it when the customer needs it and we're not we're not doing that just in case kind of production where you're overproducing just in case you might need it later so this is uh, uh, the first way to achieve lean production is through just in time okay the second way that we do this is you have to have a highly 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 trained workforce uh, they need to be very skilled and they need to be skilled in a lot of different areas so you want to have people who can do lots of different processes, who understand the, the manufacturing processes, who understand all of the, the aspects to it, because they're going to be the people who also help you improve the process. And we'll talk a little more about that later. So it's important to have a highly trained and highly skilled workforce. Okay, uh, we want uh, a quality control system, and we want to use continuous improvement. And this is where you know those highly trained people come in. in. Um, and so this is just a cycle. And this is a cycle that you should be, you know, as we're manufacturing, we should be focused on. And basically, it's you know um, checking, right? We're saying, okay, well, what um, what um, you know what control measures do we have? Um, you know, are they meeting our criteria, identify areas where there can be improvement, and then we're going to act on those. We're going to review findings of our quality management system. We're going to reevaluate processes and, and figure out how to make them better and begin quality management processes again. So you're kind of just, you know, this is a cycle. You could you could start at any uh, particular point on the cycle. You're going to identify goals and, and baselines and um, you know, think about um, internal resources, uh, determine quality standards, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to, you know, make a plan about how you're going to improve things. You're going to train your employees on how to do that. You're going to deploy uh, quality um, management systems and basically get back to the beginning again and continue the cycle. So this is a, a cycle of, of continuous improvement. The idea is, is that you identify problems. You look at you plan ways to solve the problems. You you solve those problems. You check to see if they solve that problem. Then you look for a different way to to improve things and, and continually go through this cycle. Okay, so here we go. Next one. Okay, we want zero defects. So the idea here is that you don't want any products that are uh, that you have to throw away. It's a waste of money. It's a waste, waste of materials. It's a waste in general. Okay, so we want zero defects as much as possible. Okay, so lean production uh, principles, we'll go through these individually. So we're looking for eliminating waste, um, minimizing inventory. Um, so when we say eliminating waste, right, so this is where we're having those zero defects, but also trying not to have things that, you know, like inventory or components that are, have expiration dates that might, you know, get old and broken and, and you can't use them. Okay, Minim minimizing inventory, so this could be either... Um, components that you're going to use or it could be um, uh, the end product you want to be holding on to those because space is expensive um, we talked about a lot of this in the just-in-time um, uh, lesson in, in uh, 10.1 
We want to maximize the flow of, of our products. We don't want to have any machines that are idle. We want them to be continuously being used because if I have you know, a manufacturing process where my, you know, I'm not using a machine, well, that, that's a waste of because that machine's sitting on the floor, but also you know, it has to be maintained, it has to be operated. You know, so it's, it's a waste. So you want to maximize the flow through the production process. Um, we want to make sure that we're pulling production from the customer's demand. So we don't want to overproduce. We want to produce just enough to meet customer demand. We also want to meet customer requirements. There's no sense in us producing something and then finding out that that's not what the customer wanted and then having to go back and remake it. And again, that's a, that goes back to that zero defects. You know, that would be a problem for us. Doing it right the first time, this goes back to zero defects, right? Uh, we don't want to have people, um, you know, we don't want to pay for, for broken things, okay? It's expensive, okay? Empowering our workers. We want workers to say, hey, you know how we can improve this process? So this is that whole idea of that bottom up where you're getting the workers, the people who are on the floor, the people who are actually doing the, the processes, how they're, we're empowering them to um, to suggest these, these changes and, and to improve the production as they're going okay and that's going to be one of your most valuable things and this is where it comes down to that that idea of highly trained and somebody who, who uh, can do multiple tasks okay uh we want to be ready to rapidly change over so if if we need to we don't want a process that can't be changed quickly um so that you know if things change you know, you, you, it would take you months or years to, to change the, the actual processes. So we want processes that are adaptable to lots of different situations so that they can change over very quickly. I'm talking about production processes here. So, you know, this could be things like, you know, for instance, injection molding or machining or that kind of thing, okay? Partnering with our suppliers is really important, right? Because if the suppliers aren't giving us our continuous supply, if there are supply chain interruptions, that's going to affect this whole idea of just in time, and then it's going to it's going to throw a, a wrench in the whole system. Okay, um, creating a culture of continuous improvement. So this is something called kaizen, which is a Japanese word, um, which I think it means little change or something like that, but. Um, it's creating a culture of looking for those continuous improvements. So looking to have your empowered workers say, hey, we can improve this process in this way and then empowering them to actually do that. So that's, a, that's an important thing. And that's a culture that you know, has to happen in, in a company if they want to have this lean production. Um, you know, if you think of the opposite of that, it would be somewhat a, a company where the, the only way something's gonna uh, change is if the, um, the top you know, people, leadership at the top goes, oh, I noticed an issue. Well, you know, they aren't the ones who are who are generally on the line making things work on a day-to-day -day basis. So they're not going to see these. So you want to empower those people who are on the line on a daily basis, the production line on a daily basis, to, to be somebody who can um, improve things when they see an, an, a way to improve them. Okay, so what are some advantages and disadvantages of lean production? So um, an advantage is you're going to increase customer satisfaction because, you know, because with lean production, it costs less. So you're going to have a, a cost reduction and that's going to make customers more happy or going to make customers happy. Um, a disadvantage is change in work and management attitude can be difficult to manage or gain complete buy-in. So basically, you know, if you have somebody who's been doing the same job for a lot of years and you say, okay, well, actually this, this process is going to be improved, you know, maybe that worker is not going to want to um, deal with that. Or if you have management who says, well, no, I, I know best and the, the people on the floor, on the production floor, don't know anything. They need, it needs all to come. So, you know, that can be difficult. Um, productivity is increased because of uh, the focused improvement and reduction of waste, right? So we're looking at um, focusing on improvements to productive production and then reducing waste. And so that's going to uh, increase our productivity. Okay, delivery times, since you know, you're know you not holding any of that inventory in storage, you have to produce it and then deliver it. So it could take longer and that can cause delays, right? Um, quality of product improvement and continuous improvement. So an advantage is you're gonna have better quality products and you're gonna continually improve those products. Um, you might have supply problems. This is a big disadvantage. 
Okay, uh, let's see, waste reduction, that's a big advantage, right? So we're gonna have less waste, which then comes back up here to this gonna reduce costs, all that stuff. High initial capital costs, it's more expensive, okay, at, at, at the beginning. Um, but we're gonna have a reduced impact on the environment, we're gonna increase our profits, we're going to improve working conditions for employees, uh, we'll have a competitive advantage, and we'll adapt to a, a market pull. These are all advantages and disadvantages of lean production. Okay, this is a big, big thing here. Um, so I've done a lot of research to try to explain this um, thing to you. Okay, so this is called value stream mapping, and it's a lean production management tool used to analyze current and future processes of production of a product through the delivery to the customer. Okay, so what we're going to think about here is this chart, and I'm going to explain the chart after you watch several videos. So this chart um, will make more sense after you watch this next set of videos. So watch this video. It's a, just a brief introduction to um, value stream mapping. This one is going to explain your customers, look, uh, how to understand customer demand. This is going to explain the material flow, so how material flows through the uh, production process. This is going to explain how information flows through the, the, um, the process, through the uh, map. And this is going to explain the time ladder that's at the very bottom of the page. So we'll come back to this. Uh, make sure you watch all those videos first because then it'll make sense. So the information flow is up here. It's basically understanding it's that, that information flow between the client, what do they want, and what do my suppliers, can my suppliers um, supply that? So it's, it's making sure that you have the correct information from both sides of this, um, this map, okay? So the clients and the suppliers. Okay, this is where you're gonna get to the whole product flow, and this is also material flow. And these are processes. These are different processes. So you have a, a design, a develop, a test, a build process. And right here are the things that like, the number of people who, that are going to be involved or the, the teams that are going to be involved with those things. Um, this has to do right here with inventory. How much inventory is on stock for each of these, these um, different processes? Okay, so we're looking at how does the material flow through here? What are the processes the material goes through in order to get it up to here? Okay, um, these right here, these are going to be your um, value added and your um, production lead time. Okay, so uh, the value added is down here in the bottom of this ladder. So these are the time ladders, right? And that's going to equal this right up here. Okay, so we're looking at 30 minutes of value added. We're looking at an hour and a half of value added. We're looking at a half an hour there and a half an hour there. But these are the amount of this is the amount of time that it would take for you to actually get the uh, product to the customer. Okay, so this is an, uh, basically a measure of the amount of time it takes to get it to the customer, but this is the actual value that you're adding um, to that pro production. Okay, and we're gonna stop there for now. Um, be sure you watch the videos from the previous uh, four or five slides because it's very important to understand this whole idea. All right, thanks for watching, guys.